Dr. Thomas Seyfried, professor of biology at Boston College, believes that 99% of cancer cells can die on their own if you block their main growth mechanism. According to him, all types of cancer cells share one common weakness, their dependence on fermentation. If you look under the electron microscope, or a correction, even a light micro, this is how most cancers are diagnosed by, by light microscopy. Uh, you look under the microscope and you see a bunch of cells that are dysmorphic in the way they look, and then they all have genetic defects and all this kind of stuff. But they all have one thing in common. They depend on a, on a fermentation, energy without oxygen. So all cancers are a singular type of disease. It's just that they happen in different tissues. But when you look at the underlying problem, they're all very, very similar. They can't live uh, without a fermentation, which means energy without oxygen. So that's the common pathophysiological problem in all cancers, whether it's a colon, brain, breast, bladder, skin, uh, lung. We, we've looked at all these cancers, and they're all, they're all essentially using the same mechanism to, to grow out of control. For a cancer cell to sustain the process of fermentation, it needs fuel, glucose, and glutamine. These two substances give the cell the energy it needs to grow and multiply. By cutting off its access to this fuel, you can prevent or even destroy cancer itself. All of these cancers are telling us the same thing. We are fermenting. You want to kill us? You got to take away the fermentable fuels. The cancer cells have been telling us this for decades, since the time of Warburg. But just nobody, it hasn't fallen on the, on the ear because everybody thinks it's being driven by genetic mutations. The mutations are an effect of all this process. They're not the drivers, they're the effects. We want to stop the growth. We want to prevent acidification. We want to clean up the microenvironment. You got to take away the two fermentable fuels and they can't burn fatty acids or ketones. And people say, oh, they can switch their flex. They're not flexible. We have already shown they're not flexible. They're restricted to a fermentation metabolism. So all this nonsense about they can burn fatty acids, they can't. I have the paper showing they can't do this. Nobody has shown cancer cells growing in the absence of glucose and glutamine. Cutting out glucose is relatively simple. Even a basic low-carb diet can deliver positive results. But glutamine is a more complicated story, and most people don't realize how crucial it is. In truth, glutamine isn't a bad guy. Your body needs it to support the immune system, maintain the gut lining, and ensure proper liver and brain function. However, everything changes when your metabolic environment becomes unstable. Insulin spikes, mitochondrial fatigue, and chronic inflammation sweep through the body like a storm, and glutamine ends up in the wrong place. In this disrupted state, it becomes fuel for cancer cells, not only helping them grow, but also stimulating their very formation within the body. The glutamine is, uh, you can't grow and make new DNA and RNA and proteins without a nitrogen source. So the glutamine provides the cancer cell with the nitrogen source. Uh, and the cancer is taking in glucose in large amounts. And those are the carbons for making fatty acids and nucleic acids. So there's a huge, powerful synergy between the carbons from glucose and the carbons in nitrogen from glutamine. They Together, they are powerful synergistic fuels. So, But you can lower glucose with diet and lifestyle issues. But glutamine requires targeting. Since you can't completely suppress glutamine because your body still needs it, the smarter strategy is to use natural compounds that slow down glutamine metabolism. One of the most effective of these is silibinin, a flavonolignon found in milk thistle. It's a natural antioxidant traditionally used to protect the liver, but later research revealed something remarkable. Silibinin interferes with cancer cell metabolism, especially their ability to use glutamine. Studies show that it reduces the activity of certain enzymes and blocks signaling pathways that are triggered when glutamine levels are too high. In simple terms, silabenin puts cancer cells on a diet by cutting off their ability to convert glutamine into energy. That's why milk thistle supplements can be used both for cancer prevention and as part of a supportive therapy during treatment. Two other powerful compounds with anti-glutamine properties are the flavonoid naringenin and the isoflavone genistein. Naringenin is found in citrus fruits, grapefruit, oranges, lemons, limes, pomelos, particularly concentrated in the peel and the white membranes between the segments. Genistein, on the other hand, is found in soy. Both act similarly to silabenin, 
they essentially put cancer cells on a metabolic diet or prevent them from forming in the first place. The key is to take a strategic approach. Glutamine itself isn't harmful. Your body needs it. So your methods should always match your goal. If you're aiming for cancer prevention, focus on a comprehensive plan. Stabilize your insulin levels, reduce stress, and gradually introduce milk thistle extract, citrus, or soy into your diet for a few weeks. If you're undergoing cancer treatment, always consult your doctor first to make sure these anti-glutamine effects don't interfere with your prescribed medications. You can press glucose down, but you, can, you, you can't press glutamine because the, it's absolutely essential for our gut our immune system, the urea cycles, and this kind of thing. So you really have to be strategic uh, when you're targeting glutamine. You just can't choke cold glutamine because it's so essential for so many other things. So you pulse it uh, as dosage timing and scheduling. Coming back to the strategic approach, it's important to return to the root of the problem. Think about what actually makes glutamine go rogue. Inflammation is one of the main triggers. That's why you should always keep omega-3 fats in your diet found in fish, walnuts, and other healthy sources. Omega-3s help reduce inflammatory cytokines, preventing inflammation from taking hold in the first place. And when inflammation is under control, glutamine functions the way it's supposed to. The same goes for your mitochondrial health. Find yourself an active hobby, swimming, running, tennis, or anything that keeps your body moving. Physical activity strengthens the mitochondria, which in turn keeps glutamine metabolism stable and efficient. Any, any, most exercise, swimming, running, walking, depending on what age you are, you know, you're not going to get a 90-year-old guy to run a marathon, uh, but he can certainly walk around if he's still able to do that. Whereas younger people can be, you know, doing more walking, weightlifting, and all this kind of stuff. Because the more activity you give your muscles, the more uh, breathing you, you have, you make your mitochondria healthy, you're sucking the glucose and the glutamine out of the, out of the system, and then you come in with this, with strategic targeting uh, of these processes. And these hammer these cancer cells get hammered; they can't handle it. And then people say, "Oh, they're versatile." No, they they're not versatile. We interrogated these damn cells. They are absolutely dependent on this fuel. If you and the reason why they look so hard, they look so great, because when you take radiation and toxic poisons, you free up the two fuels driving these cancer cells. So you, so the fuels the what we're doing to the cancer patients are allowing the cells to have the very fuels they need to grow. So you, 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 it's, it's, and that's why it's not effective for so many people. Yeah, you can keep these things at bay if you incinerate a whole region of your tissue with a radiation and poison somebody where they're vomiting and diarrhea and fatigue. I mean, this is causing stress on the tumor cell, but it's a stress on the body too. Of course, it's important to understand that Dr. Seyfried's approach isn't a miracle cure. It's a logical chain of actions that simply deprives cancer of the conditions it needs to grow. The key is to focus on the entire sequence of steps, not just one element. When each part of the chain is in place, the disease has no chance to take hold. While metabolic therapy isn't yet included in official clinical guidelines, Dr. Thomas Seyfried is confident that within the next few years, it will become one of the primary ways to prevent and treat cancer.